welcome to hashtag 52 needs and today we are exploring compassion and I'm so delighted to have with me Kylie Hutchinson who's a death doula who takes a holistic approach to end of life to ensure that her clients are living well and dying better her aim is to ensure that people plan their end of life journey and that they get their needs met in every way possible this includes spiritual and mental as well as emotional and physical needs Kylie is currently enrolled in the third world's first end of life doula certificate for course welcome Kylie Thank you for having me. Oh, you would be if I, when I thought about compassion, you were the first person I thought of, not just because of what you do, but also because of who you are. Thank you. So what's compassion? I think it's um it's not always putting your needs before someone else's or someone else's needs before you. It's just understanding where people are at. You know, it's just a little bit of I always think. Everybody's fighting a battle that you know nothing about and and just having a little bit of understanding that mm. that they are in a place that the amount of times you say to someone, how are you? And they go, I'm fine. And they're really not fine. <laughs> they're really not. No. They're far from it, but explaining to you all of this going on, that going on, and yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's a... Uh fine and i use the word now it's like excuse listeners watchers you know it's fucked up irrational neurotic emotionally unavailable but i'm not going to tell you because <laughs> i'm fine it's yeah. where the smile doesn't reach the eyes and yeah. it's just fine i'm fine so, yeah. yeah yeah well because we've learned that when we share emotions with people and we share that we're vulnerable people go into fix it mode or they try to distract us i mean i've got i've got some games where i show people you know, because empathy is part of compassion. Mm -hmm. uh, compassion is more that it's more an act. It's it's not an act. It's an action. Yeah. And, and empathy is what we feel. So I think for me, um, compassion is we take what somebody is going through as something that's serious. That's maybe even um, it's unjust. Mm. Right. There is something that's not quite right. That needs to be somebody needs to help that person. Right. Yeah. And if we don't help them, there could be some some consequences. Yeah. So that's really what's important. And, and the thing is, again, that's where the empathy comes in. We can imagine that we go through the same thing and we don't want that to happen. So we help someone. Hmm. Right? But empathy is just feeling something and going, oh, that, that's not, not even sympathy because that's feeling sorry for someone. Yeah. But yeah. that's, oh, I feel that. I can, I can resonate with that. But compassion is the action. The action, yeah. It's it's helping them out of that situation if that's what they need. Exactly. Or it, it may just be sitting with them and letting them cry. Yeah. 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 Or letting them vent. Yeah. Or, or sh letting them be angry about it, whatever it is. Yes, yeah. exactly. And I've, I've gone to a lot of, um, you know, a lot of classes and women's circles and, and those sort of things and, um, I'm fascinated with how often somebody, they open the, the space and say, well, you know, this is what we're doing. And just a reminder, this may bring up this and these sort of things may happen. And that person is responsible for their own tears. You can push them a box of tissues, but don't reach out, don't hug them, let them cry because that's part of the process. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm always like, are we still doing this? Like <laughs> we still have to be reminded, but we do. Mm, we do absolutely. we still have to be reminded that the compassion is helping that person but it's not doing what you want for them what i want what i think oh my god i would totally just jump in there and do that it's not okay it's what is it that they need yeah i like asking the people the question so who, when, you know, when I've got people in front of me and we talk about these topics, so who is, um, when they get sick, want the, want the chicken soup, want the, the, want the cuddling and the, you know, the fussing around and the tucking in and the nurturing and checking in every five minutes and half the class raises their hands. And then who wants to be totally left alone? And the other half is who teaches, who treats people when they are sick exactly the same way they would want to be treated? Yeah. And everybody goes, everybody raises their hand mostly. And then they go, yeah, see, the problem is only half of the people really want that. That's it. Yeah. And I see it in my work. Mm. Um, yeah. That I just go, okay, 
what is it you want? And it may be, oh, you know, this last one that I just fiddled with the last couple of weeks, not how I would do it in any way, shape or form, but I had to just keep prompting everyone that was going in. She wants yeah. to be left alone. No, she does not want the dirt under her fingernails removed. No, don't, don't do it. She doesn't want this. She doesn't want that. They're like, what are we meant to do? And I was like, check every so often around the corner and just make sure she's breathing. <laughs> the rest of the time she's okay. <laughs> so question for you. If, I mean, if we are supposed to treat people the way they want to be treated, would that, if we did that, would that reduce compassion fatigue? Because that's a real issue these days. Yeah, compassion fatigue. Um, yeah, I think it, what would reduce? Yeah, it would, it would. But also um, we have to be aware that that compassion fatigue happens because it's one person generally doing it all. Mm. Um, and and my, in my experience, I think that comes from not wanting to ask for help from other people. Yeah. So I end up, especially with, with my clients, I end up in situations where care of burnout is a thing, compassion yeah. fatigue, um, because the person who is ill wants that one person, yeah. just that one person to do it. And, and, and they don't want to ask for help from anyone else. They don't want anyone else seeing them in that situation. They don't want... Mm. They don't want to deal with everyone else's emotions when they're the ones that's quite ill. Yeah. And, you know, somebody comes in crying and then the next person comes in crying. It's like, oh, yeah. they're the one dealing with it and comforting everyone else. So, mm. yeah, if if we could be a little bit more compassionate and understanding of where they're at, then, yeah, I can see that that would definitely yeah. be. Alternatively, I think we need to revamp the whole emergency medicine system as well, because I think these people are because they are just giving, giving, giving all the time and they don't really have time to process what's going on for them because, you know, there's this, you know, you're showing compassion for other people, but then, you know, run, run a double shift and here's somebody, you've got 10 minutes to spend with them and now you've got 10 minutes with them and you have to, and you give all the time. So it's that that giving, that that relentlessness, that not being able to take care of yourself. And that's the one thing that I've learned because I remember the very first time I actually did any work like this in, in um, nonviolent communication when I was studying and we were talking about empathy and compassion and they said, of course, that includes you. And I remember sitting there going, me? Yeah. I'm pa I, and, and I was I, I was I was stunned because I had been taught to give all the time that I was not my needs did not matter. And as women, definitely more than men. Yeah, it's definitely more than men. We are told that we are, um, you know, to people, please, to um look after everyone around you look after your parents look after your children look after your husband yeah and you know that whole especially stay-at-home mums get it they're like oh I need a break and they go well, you're a stay-at-home mom what what are you even doing playing with your child all day yeah no yeah, exactly <laughs> um and then but working mums go oh, I need time for myself they go you go to work you know what do you mean you need time for yourself? Yeah. And and we don't. We don't give it to ourselves. No. Yeah, compassion totally. for ourselves as well is a massive thing. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm. So what can we do to increase compassion? <laughs> what can we do to increase compassion? Uh, I just think just put, I would say, a little bit more love and a little bit more laughter out into the world. Mm. Yeah. And and since we were talking about the, the compassion fatigue, notice when you're anxious, when you're exhausted, when you're not sleeping well, when you're irritable, when, you know, when you're going into this, I don't know why I'm doing this anymore. I can't be bothered. I'm or going numb. You yeah. know, like I can't really connect to people anymore. Um, and there's, I should really do this better. You know, that's like a sort of yeah. self-contempt. So mm. all of these things, you know, like not caring about things, then caring too much or just numbing down in personal relationships. I mean, I'm, again, any of that sort, when you notice any of those things, the first thing is to have self-compassion. Yeah. And I say, you can't pour from an empty jug. No. 
Do you know what my friend says? You, you should only ever give from your saucer. Your cup should always be overflowing and give from your saucer. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Saucer, that's a nice one. I know. Yeah, the, the, you can't pour from an empty jug is actually a German tra- German word, you know, yeah. an expression. So I'm using this. I just yeah, but I love that. I love it. But you can't pour from an empty jug, and you and if you do, you've given all of yourself, and then what are you putting? You should be constantly filling up your own jug, your own cup, yeah. constantly. Yeah, and we see it so often in people that have gotten, they just give and give and give, and you know, there's even science linking that now. There's we're seeing reactions in the body, mm. which they're saying, well, this is, you know, these are people who have given so much of themselves and you see it in Absolutely. in how our body reacts to that. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. yeah. But the thing is, again, we associate compassion with heroism mm. or heroism, wherever you pronounce it. Never mind. We know. So it's the, <laughs> The Martin Luther Kings, the Nelson Mandela's, the Florence Nightingales, Florence Nightingale, the Mother Teresa, the Joan of Arc, you know, all of these people that can then turn into martyrs because they have had so much compassion. They they actually almost, you know, they sacrificed their life for it, whether they got shot or died. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's it's beside the point, but it says the sense of selflessness. Mm. And so compassion is this, you have to give up yourself. Whereas I, you know, I mean, the thing is, I always say, when you're in a tribe, the word, the word self is a bad word, because in order to survive in the tri- tribe, you have to be selfless. If you have a self, you automatically become selfish. So we're allowed to have compassion for other people, but we're not allowed to have people for ourselves. Yeah. What we need to learn is to give to ourselves. And I think it was Carolyn Mace who said, we have to learn to be selfing. Selfing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because selfish, you know, is so negative. Yeah. Negative connotation. So compassion starts with the self. Yeah. Yeah, it does. And it's something I say to people, I go in and I go, okay, well, this is the situation and what are we doing? And what are you doing for yourself? Mm. I don't have time for spa baths and massages. That's not (laughs) self-compassion. No. What, and whatever you need to do for yourself. And there's times when maybe that needs to be put on hold. Maybe you need to dedicate a week to setting these systems up and and you don't have time to get the massage, but next week you book it in and you yeah. get it. Yeah. yeah. And it might be self-compassion might also be to say, I'm actually too tired to leave the house and have a massage. I might just need to lie down and have a sleep. Yeah. Or the one thing I needed to learn was I have, I always have really long to-do lists and if I don't take every item off, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> it's okay. As long as I make sure that the ones I really need to take off are the ones that yeah. get taken off and I do those first thing. Yeah. The self-compassion is to go, I didn't finish it. Yeah. And that's okay. It can go on to tomorrow's. Yeah. I use post-it notes. I have post-it notes on this kitchen window. And I have posted when I when I think, oh, I've got to remember to do that, or I've got to ring them tomorrow during office hours, write little post-it notes and stick it. Um, you stick it on my kitchen window and I have my coffee in the morning and see my notes. And some of them go, eh, no, they can go over there. Like, well, they can wait. I, These are important. I've got mine in, in the notes app on the phone and you, yeah. you've got the, you can tick them off and then they disappear. They automatically yeah. at the bottom. Yeah. That's one of the most satisfying things I've it done. Is. Oof, and it's gone. I know I've got that app and you just use the little notes and when, when it ticks and you just watch it, it goes, boom. Yeah. <laughs> that's my shopping list when I think oh I've run out of that or yeah go yeah in there. yeah we have four or five lists going but it's part of my self-compassion program yeah like I mean I I've never really thought of it that way but now that we talk about it it is yeah okay yeah. so what can we do to improve our compassion with other people I mean like again we are um I think we, the last few years have really been tough on us oh huge yeah Huge. I'm not sure have we become more or less compassionate I I went through the fires in on the south coast so we went through the bushfires just before COVID 
So during the bushfires, everyone was amazing. Everyone jumped in and helped each other. And, and you know, I saw some amazing people that, you know, my whole street, we all went around and door knocked and found out who was home and who had stayed and how many people were in each house. And we checked things out. And then one lady had still had hot water. We were all showering at her house. <laughs> we're all showering because we had no water, you know, no electricity for days. So we're all having hot water, hot showers at her house. And then um, somebody else had had a big barbecue. So we were cooking food there and sharing it. Um, and then COVID hit three months later and everyone was like, don't, you know, dob in your neighbours and and they're doing this thing wrong. And, and I was like, whoa, whoa. And even how we treated, especially I saw it, our elderly in aged care facilities and our medical system and um you know people were allowed to travel for business but weren't allowed to travel for funerals um how we um expected women who had a job to work from home and also homeschool children um and run the house wasn't really pushed yeah and run the house it wasn't yeah <laughs> even marketing there was even ads there was even ads like that um england england ran it it was this ad of the woman looking after the children and homeschooling and doing housework and the man sitting in an office doing computer work it's like hang on <laughs> like this stereotype exists and 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 we're being marketed it Absolutely. Uh, yeah and I saw that sort of change and then I think it, it it's almost now that we're sort of a couple of years down through it I think people are stepping back now and and seeing that hang on we really kind of we had this we had a great system and then, you know, we had COVID and then we had the floods. And they're like, well, now we're like, oh, now we need to help them again. We're like, hang on, we should have been helping in the middle. Like we shouldn't be. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of things. If you call it something social distancing, you're creating, there's already an implication of yeah. Yeah. compassion and you get too close to people, you're endangering them. And I mean, I know that Alan... Um, Stevens and I, we always had this thing about it's not social distancing. It's a thing. It's physical, physical distancing. Because you, know, you, so you call it social distancing. You are taking compassion right yeah. out of the picture. Yeah, absolutely. There's no room for, for compassion when you do that. No, no. So, and I, yeah, I'm, I think we've, uh, most people have stepped back and seen it. Most people have been able to step back and say, hang on, we really could have been a lot more compassionate in this and not come from a place of fear yeah. because then once the floods especially the floods in New South Wales and and Queensland you know copped a bit of it there but um even now people are oh are you allowed to travel no. to go and help them I'm like really yeah. really like can we it's, care it's uh yeah sometimes again compassion means you have to defy the rules sometimes <laughs> And I'm not saying, please, please don't take this as a no. as a call for anarchy and for any kind of violence. I'm just saying sometimes you actually have to do what's right for another person. Yeah, yeah, and not, it's not without not without endangering your life. I'm not no. saying, but, you know, we came to a place where we realized it was not a pandemic anymore. It was just an endemic. It had been downgraded, and you yeah. know, yeah, yeah. And, it, and we're going to go through that. And I think you know, my mum at the time said oh, this is just what your generation has to cop because our generation had war. And I was like, okay, you know, yep. said, really, mum, you're a boomer. You didn't cop much at all, like Vietnam. <laughs> no, but but they were. Yeah, but you know, like, at least, I mean, we. They raised with that, my, yeah. My grandmother got bombed out twice during World War Two. Yeah. You know, yeah. so I, I grew up with her and she was very much still in that paradigm. Yeah. So, and my client I was just with was born in England in yeah. the war. And, you know, um, during you know, the last few weeks talking about what she did to survive and and now at the end of a life saying, well, I'm ready to die. But actually, really, her body was just so resilient. And yeah. so like that will to live kicks in hard and it's stoic. And, yeah. Yeah. It was interesting. And so, yeah, it, I think it is something that we had to go through for a generation of humanity to go, hang on, this is tough and this is this is going to change how we do and, and pivot on things. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I just love it when people say, oh, the young generation, they have never had any hardship. You know, and I'm like, mm, 
Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, judgment no, no, no. in a totally different way. But that's the thing about compassion. You can't have judgment and compassion. No, you can't. No. Like it is a completely different way. Yeah. Yeah. And someone, um, my son did his HSE, you know, he's just finished a few weeks ago. Mm. And and someone sent me a message and said, congratulations on getting through your HSE in these times. Mm. And I thought, wow, thank you. Yes, you're right. Doing year, for him, year yeah. 10, 11 and 12 during COVID was massive. And yes, there's, but there's people now that have done three years of uni in COVID. Like this, this younger generation have really mm. done it completely differently. And that's going to show in, in how they then go out into the world and, and the technology that they then implement and go, why can't we just do this? Why well, we can just do it this way? It's amazing. And yeah. yeah. And I think that'll change things how we embrace it. And, yeah. and again, we started to have because of the distancing and we started to connect more on zoom if you look around there are all these projects that are worldwide now yeah people, people are connecting in a much much wider community yeah. than they did before because it's just become so normal to be on zoom yeah. and people are reaching out again gen z is just they're just great at, at creating these worldwide projects you know where one person sits in africa one sits in asia one sits in the u.s mm. you know and it's just the continents working together and again, there is that understanding that that I think that's what people have realized is there's we are all in this together. Yep. Right. It's when it affects one person on one continent, it does not immunize the person on the other continent. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's been amazing to watch that the world get a little smaller. Yeah. Um, yeah. The and And say how people are doing things and how people are processing things and. Yeah, I've kind of really enjoyed watching mm. people come up with unique ways to do things or um, especially all the online trainings, like suddenly mm. everything's available online training where you used to have to travel and you used to have to do this. And, yeah, mm. like, well, no, we can just do this online now. Yeah. Yeah, self-paced. And I'm like, sweet, love and self-paced. Wow. Learning. That's the thing is, is when, when we get together, yeah, and I just I just just ran a workshop a little while ago in Canberra, and it was literally for the first time in mm. a very long time that people actually got together, and there there was such joy in that. Yeah. yeah. So. There is. so yeah, again. and and I think you really appreciate it. Mm. You, you don't. You sort of think I'm really going to make the effort to do this, and yeah. I did a two day workshop here not long ago, and one of the girls that came to it came from about oh it's about maybe hour and. 15 minutes drive away but she made it a weekend away for her and her husband and son she was like yeah we're going to go down there and we're going to stay we're going to go to the beach every day like so yeah he went to the beach with their son and she went to this workshop and and she said it was only like an hour and 20 minutes away I pr probably could have done that back and forth she said but just the planning and the joy in doing that and going well oh, just do this yeah, so really enjoy, yeah so there's again there's some self-compassion in there so yeah. we have had this for a long time so now we're going to do this because connection matters so much totally different talk still yeah. I think I've got that one we've got that one too <laughs> uh we can talk about this for hours thank you so much and we still have um compassion at work to go so um anybody who's interested in that please continue watching listening and uh, we'll see you all there thank you so much Kylie thank you all right thanks everybody Bye. Bye.